Ok. The method number two. I'm going to solve the method number two for doing the same problem that we were solving before. Uh, if you have been watching the videos, then you should remember this. We did several things. One of the things that we did was calculating this shape. We have this shape, this parabola here, and then we have to calculate uh, the, the centroid with respect to the x-axis, and we did that. We calculated the centroid with respect to the axis by doing the same procedure that we always did. We selected the y in this way and the, the differential of area perpendicular to the y because I'm doing the ix equal integral of y squared dA and this is the way I explained it to you and we calculated that. Now we also in the other video calculated now i sub y i sub y equal x squared dA. How do we do that? Well we measure x and we do dA. Now let me show you a twist, a different trick because sometimes you don't want to start switching the differential of area. Uh, that requires a little bit of vision from your part and practice, that's it. But once you get used to see that and to apply those tricks, everything becomes so much more fun. Because then you can do it in any way that you want to. Okay, this is what we did for I sub X. Now I'm going to do something similar, but for I sub Y. I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you a cool trick here that maybe your professor showed you before, maybe not, maybe the books taught you that, maybe not. But let's say that I I was doing I sub x, remember I did I sub x before I sub x before and say integral of y squared dA. That's what we did before. And I did all the procedure and I solved the whole problem like that. And I say, you know something, I don't want to change my differential of area. I know that I said uh, you measure if you say now I sub y, you have to say the integral of x squared dA and measure x and put the, the other differential of area in this direction, which is exactly what we did here in the other video. But let's say that I want to keep the same the same differential of area. Nobody's telling me that I have to change the differential of area. But then I can say what I'm looking for, I sub y. And I sub y, I can say also that is the integral of diy. Duh, of course it is. So if I can find this differential of iy using the same differential of area, then my problem is solved. Easy peasy. So how do we do that? Well, if you look at that bar, that's a rectangle. Rectangle. Do you know the moment of inertia for a rectangular shape? Yes, you do know it. Moment of inertia with respect to y is no other thing that h v cubed divided by 12. Okay, what is h? dy. What is b? 2x to the third divided by 12. And problem solved with it now. Ey, iy equal the integral of this. 2x to the third divided by 12 dy. And solve for this, then this is going to be two to the third is going to be eight. Take it out of, out of the integral. Where are my papers? Cheat sheet here. Okay, so this is going to be eight. Take it outside. Eight divided by twelve. Eight divided by twelve, and this is going to be x to the third. But x to the third, the integral of x to the third dy. I don't know how much is x. Do I know how much is x? No, but I know how much is y. So if I know how much is y, I can solve x from this equation. I know y equal 1 divided by 50 x squared. So if I solve for x, x is going to be equal. Pass this 50 to the other side. Take the square root of both. So it's going to be a square root of 50 multiplied by y to the 1 half. Now I introduce this here. And then I say that i y is going to be this x there. Now this is going to be equal to two 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 eight divided by twelve integral of this to the third. So I'm going to put it step by step. Dy. I took this two out. That's why the eight came from. And then this is going to be equal to, I keep the same thing, this one I can take it outside of the 
uh, integral, so it's going to be a to the 12, this is going to be elevated to the third also, square root of 50 elevated to the third, integral of y power of a power, power elevated to the power, so this is 1 half times 3, so this is going to be y to the 3 half dy. Now we keep solving the problem and then we say that i y is going to be equal to all of this heck of a number here. And this is 3 half, 3 half plus 1 is the same thing as saying y to the 5 divided by 2 and then I divide it by 5 divided by 2 which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths and this is what I have there and this has to be evaluated now this is what, it, what you have to be careful because remember I, I have been telling you this since I started doing these videos you have to sweep the shape with your differential of area so my differential of area goes from here to there that's what you have to do from here to there what is this point? this point correspond to this line which is y equals 0 y equals 0 and goes up to this other line which as we calculated it was 200 millimeters 200 millimeters and then we put everything once again in our calculator by the way I know it's not calculator I just have fun saying calculator 8 divided by 12 multiplied by 50 to the 3 half 1 5 times 200 divided to the fifty three thousand three fifty three million three 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 point three millimeters to the fourth. That was the same result that we got before, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. Done. Same result that we got before. If you want to express it once again, you can say that this is uh, IY equal 53.3 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. And you can call this, if you want, to method number 2 as you please. Which one you use? The one that you know the one that you handle, the one that you can uh, work, the one that you remember, I don't know, the one that is easier. Enjoy guys.